Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is the first video of a series of videos where we are going to be making some pin cushions. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this adorable quilted pin cushion using stamps, rice, and polyfill. We'll go over some other filling options at the end of today's video. And let's get started with video number one. To get started today, I'm going to go ahead and press some white cotton fabric that I'll be stamping on. To help stabilize it during the stamping process, I'm just going to fuse some freezer paper right to the back side of my fabric. Coming over to my work table, I'll be using my Tim Holtz stamping platform, my fabric with the freezer paper on the back, and this really adorable clean stamp. I really love using my stamping platform because you can apply multiple layers of ink and it never smudges or gets messed up. And I love that because I like my images really dark and bold. I'm just going to position my stamp exactly in the middle of my fabric. Today I'm going to be using the Memento Luxe Tuxedo Black Ink Pad. This is a great multimedia pigment based uh, ink pad. It's great for fabric, paper, wood, leather, all kinds of stuff. Just reapplying the ink three times. Three times gives me a really nice image with this fabric. Sometimes you might have to do it more than that. Sometimes it comes out perfect the first time. <laughs> Now that the ink is good and dry, just after sitting a few minutes, I'm going to come in with my Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. I'm also going to use some of this clear aloe vera gel that I got at Walmart. Put a little bit of that into a paint tray. And then I do have a variety of different brushes. There's no rhyme or reason. Just pick one of some of your favorite brushes. And let the fun stuff begin. I'm going to go through and add a little bit of background color throughout my image. I like to do this part when the image is nice and dry and I'm just adding some color right into some of the details of the teacups. Some background colors, some detail colors. And I like to do this part when it's nice and dry. Once I get some color laid into the image, I will come in with the aloe vera gel on my brush and activate the ink, which really makes it really bold and bright and beautiful. And it just comes to life. Of course, my pencil sharpener makes a huge mess all over my project. <laughs> I usually have at least one mishap during each one of my videos. <laughs> Just going through and adding some color here and there. One thing for sure is this stamp has a lot of intricate details. You could probably spend a lot of time if you really wanted to go in and color each one of these details. Once I have it all colored in, I'm just adding some aloe vera gel to my paintbrush. And I just like to tappy, tappy, tappy. Just add a little bit of aloe vera gel and it just really brightens up that ink. But I don't want to smudge it. When the aloe vera gel is wet on the fabric, you can go back in with your ink tense pencils and really add uh, a lot more color if you wanted to do that, even some more details. You can do this technique with any of the rubber stamps that you have, any of your cling stamps. You could get creative and make your own custom fabric for your pin cushions. I think it's a great way to make one of a kind projects using rubber stamps. I'm 
the ink tint is permanent. We're going to let this sit and dry just a few minutes. And then we're going to take it over to the iron. We're going to remove the freezer paper from the back once it's nice and dry. And then I'm going to put it pretty side down and just heat set everything. Make sure it's nice and dry with a dry iron set on the cotton setting. Now I'm just going to take a scrap of batting. This is an 80-20 very thin batting and that's exactly what I want for this project. I'm just going to cut myself off a little piece that is a little bit bigger than the fabric I'm working with and we're going to move over to the sewing machine. Now of course this part is optional but I really love to go in and make my projects a little bit quilty. Give it a little bit of uh, texture with the quilting. I'm using my free motion foot and a white thread in both the top and the bobbin. There is no backing fabric at this point and I'm just doing some little swirls, some little whimsical swirling in the background. And then I'll go in in between the saucers and the teacups and quilt those down as well. At this point, we can bring it over and trim up our design. You can make your pin cushions any size. That's one of the reasons why I love these projects is because you don't have to have a pattern. You can make it as big or as small as you like. Just get creative and have fun with the process. Trimming away all of the raw edge. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and add a little fabric border to my image for the front. Cutting some strips of fabric one and a quarter inches wide. And I'm going to add a little frame, a little fabric border on all four sides. So we can bring this over to the sewn machine. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance as I add these borders first to the top and the bottom. And once you get those added, you'll want to press them nice and flat and trim off any extra that hangs over the sides. And then you can add your borders on the left and the right. Again, there are no rules. You could make your borders as big or as small as you would like. I think the one and a quarter inch border is perfect for this little pin cushion. And once you have the left and right borders on, again, you'll want to open them up, give them a press, nice and flat. Now I've chosen a backing fabric, a fabric for the back of my pin cushion. I'm just going to roughly cut out a piece of fabric that I want to use for the back. Being careful not to cut off too much. <laughs> now we're going to put pretty sides together. Pretty sides together. And then we're going to sew. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam all the way around each one of the sides, making sure to leave a good opening so we can turn this right side out. I do do a back stitch at the very beginning. And then again, when I come to the other side before stopping, do a little back stitch that just locks everything in place.
Now we can go ahead and just trim away any extra bulk that goes beyond our quarter inch seam. And then I like to take a pair of scissors and just clip those corners. Now we can turn this right side out and poke out each one of our little four corners. Just using my little finger right in the corner, pokey poke, poke those out nice and pretty. You can use an awl if you want to, or a pencil. We're gonna flatten this out, and now we're ready to add our stuffing. So there are so many things that you can fill your pin cushions with. So let's talk about that for just a second. So in my research of different blogs, videos, tutorials, websites, I've seen a variety of different materials that you can use to fill your pin cushions. So I'm just gonna list them off. Sawdust, smashed coffee beans. I bet you that smells delicious. <laughs> Thread and fabric clippings, cotton and batting scrappings, ground walnut shells, that's one of my favorite things to use. Steel wool, plastic beads that you use to stuff teddy bears, sand, dried beans like lentils and rice. And so in this uh, pin cushion, I've decided to use a little bit of rice and some polyfill. And the rice really helps to weight down your pin cushion. So I'm not gonna fill it up all the way with rice. I'm gonna fill it up about a mm, little over a quarter of the way with rice. Actually, when I'm done with this, and after I sew it up, I wish I would have added more rice to it <laughs> to make it a little bit more heavier. I can always open it back up later and put more rice in there to make it a little bit more heavy. But I added about a quarter of the way up with rice and then I used some polyfill to finish stuffing my, uh, my little pin cushion. Once you get it as stuffed as you would like it to be, we can go ahead and hand sew the opening shut, which is probably my least favorite part of the whole process. <laughs> Just using a needle and a thread that kind of matches my fabric a little bit, just in case you see it, because again, it's not my favorite part and I'm not terrific at it. So sometimes you see my little stitches but we're just gonna hand sew the opening shut. That's why I tried to make my opening as small as humanly possible. <laughs> so I have a little bit less mm -hmm. hand sewing to do at the end. But these pin cushions make terrific gifts. We have Christmas coming up soon. Uh, we're getting ready to do a pin cushion swap on the Creative Crew group. If you have friends with birthdays, maybe you're like me and you have a pin cushion or a pin magnet at each one of your workstations and you can never have enough pin cushions, this would be a great way to make yourself some more. So I'm hoping this video has inspired you. Break out some stamp pads, break out your stamps, break out your watercolor pencils or your ink tense pencils, your fabric paint, and create your own one of a kind pin cushion. Look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? I love it. So as I mentioned in the very beginning, this is video one. I have several different other ideas for pin cushions that I'm gonna be sharing in this series with you. So make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you get notified when I upload a new video. We'll see you really soon. Bye everybody.